notes and we're going to be talking about phase changes or changes in a state of matter from one state or phase to the next. And we have an activity we're going to be doing that I think is going to um, make this make a lot more sense. But for the sake of the video, we're going to do the notes all together right now. So let's talk about changing states of matter. When particles gain or lose thermal energy, they undergo a state change. And this is considered a physical change, not a chemical one, because the identity of the matter is still the same. I mean, look at this picture here. When ice melts, it's still water. It's still two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom. It's just in a different form based on the amount of energy it has, okay? So this is completely physical. The heat of fusion, which can also be referred to as the molar enthalpy of fusion, is just the amount of energy in the form of heat that's needed to turn one mole of a solid into a liquid at its melting point. So when heat gets added to a solid, think it's going to raise the temperature. Temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy of particles in the object. So if heat's added, temperature's higher, it's going to have more kinetic energy. So the particles are going to be vibrating faster. They're going to start being able to move further apart and they're going to have enough energy to overcome some of those intermolecular forces that are holding them really tightly packed together. And eventually they'll have enough energy to be fully transitioned into that liquid state. The heat of vaporization, which is also known as the molar enthalpy of vaporization, is just the amount of energy as heat needed to turn one mole of a liquid into a gas at its boiling point. So similar concept, but now we're just going from liquid to gas. So we're getting, we're getting enough energy to overcome the remaining intermolecular forces at work to get to the point where the particles can move independently of each other and freely collide. I love a diagram like this. I think it's really helpful just to summarize how matter undergoes these phase changes. So I'm gonna use red arrows to, to represent adding energy in the form of heat and blue to represent removing energy in the form of heat. Remember from physical science, hopefully you took, there's no such thing truly as cold. Cold is just the absence of heat. So we're adding and we're removing heat. We're not like adding heat and adding cold, okay? so. When we go from a solid to a liquid state, we're adding energy in the form of heat and that's causing it to melt. If we're going from liquid to solid, we're removing energy in the form of heat and that's create caused, that's called freezing to go from liquid to solid. Liquid to gas is vaporization. Gas to liquid is condensation. Solid to gas is called sublimation. So you have enough energy change that you totally skip the liquid phase and go directly from a solid to a gas. And then gas to solid is deposition. So the energy, enough energy is removed that again, it's that drastic shift from gas to solid without, with completely, we're just skipping that liquid phase. Okay, so we're gonna talk about each one of these. Let's first talk about the transition of a, or the phase change of a solid to a liquid and a liquid to a solid, which is what we see here in that original picture I kinda showed y'all. So melting, that's just the phase or state change of a solid to a liquid, and it occurs when we add energy in the form of heat. The melting point is specifically the temperature at which a solid becomes a liquid due to the kinetic energy of the particles overcoming the attractive intermolecular forces that hold their order together. So we have enough energy in, to overcome those forces. In crystalline solids, this is a definite point, but not in amorphous solids, if you remember learning that distinction in concept one. And think about it, why does that make sense? Well, visualize a crystalline solid. Remember that geometric arrangement, it's all, the whole inside of a crystalline solid is arranged the exact same. So you hit one temperature, think about it like a domino effect, everything can change. Whereas an amorphous solid, I mean, there's an arrangement, but it's not geometric, it's not as orderly. So maybe if one point changes, maybe the rest doesn't necessarily change at that same point because it's got a little bit of variation on the inside. So think about it that way. Now, the other direction is freezing. It can also be referred to as solidification. This is the phase or state change from liquid to solid, and this is just the opposite. We're removing energy in the form of heat. The freezing point is the temperature at which a liquid turns into a crystalline solid. And typically this is just the same temperature as melting point. It's just, or the process is going in the opposite direction. That's all that's happening here. But it would still be like this same temperature. So for example, you could say that the freezing and melting point of water is zero degrees Celsius. 
All right, liquid to gas is next, or gas to liquid. So vaporization is just the phase change from liquid to gas. We're adding energy in the form of heat. And we see this two different ways, which we will talk about on the next slide. And then the other direction is just condensation, going from gas to liquid, removing energy in the form of heat. Now I mentioned vaporization kind of happens two ways. That's what we're gonna talk about and distinguish here on this slide. And so there's a difference between evaporation and boiling, which we'll talk about on these next two slides. So first let's talk about evaporation. This is only happening at the surface of a liquid. And it's when particles escape the surface of a non-boiling liquid. Like it's not, it could just be, you can have evaporation with a cup of water on your bedside table. And it's happening to a gas. And so the liquid's turning into a gas and it's because of a pressure change. So we know particles have different kinetic energies. Higher kinetic energy particles move faster. They can overcome intermolecular forces that keep them in a liquid state. We, we, you know, we know that, and then they become a gas. So volatile liquids are liquids that are just gonna readily evaporate due to really weak attractive forces between their particles. So they're gonna just do this a lot more naturally and a lot more readily, I guess I should say, than traditional liquids like water in a cup on your bedside table. Now, vapor pressure is the point in which pressure is in equilibrium, and thus molecules move between the liquid and gas phases at the same rate. Remember, equilibrium means changes are happening at the same time. So at vapor pressure, things are evaporating and condensing at equal rates. That's what we see at a vapor pressure. So again, this is only happening at the surface of a liquid. Boiling is different. It's caused by a temperature change. It's going throughout the liquid as the liquid particles change to bubbles of vapor. The boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure. All energy absorbed gets used to evaporate the liquid with a constant temperature and pressure. At normal atmospheric pressure, which is one ATM, one atmosphere, which is equal to 760 torrs or 101.3 you know, kilopascals, which we're gonna talk about all these pressure units and all that in concept three. But water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. The temperature at which water boils is dependent on the pressure. So that will change. The lower the atmospheric vapor pressure, the lower the boiling point, okay? Think about uh, Instapot or pressure cooker. If you've ever had, seen one of those, if you have one in your kitchen, they cook food really quickly. How? Well, they seal. They have like this like vacuum seal when you lock them in and it causes the steam to build up in this small contained space, which is gonna increase the pressure in the space. The higher pressure causes the boiling point to, you know, be greater and thus it's gonna result in shorter cook times. We can cook it faster because of this higher pressure. All right, now let's talk about solid to gas or gas to solid. This is the one we're not gonna interact with as much just because it's kind of unique. I think the best way to understand this is looking at a phase diagram, which we're gonna look at in a few slides. But just from a definition standpoint, sublimation, phase change of a solid directly to a gas. An example of this is dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide. And then deposition is just a change of a gas directly to a solid. An example of this is when frost forms on a cold surface, like a window. So it's not snowing, but you have this frost forming there. All right, now two things to end with is two different diagrams you're gonna see. One is a heating curve. A heating curve is a diagram that shows the phase changes a substance goes through as energy in the form of heat is added to it. So typically on the x-axis you'll see time or maybe like heat absorbed over time and then temperature on the y-axis. And so what this is showing us is how that changes. A cooling curve just goes the opposite direction. So it's gonna show you know, it moving this direction. All right, so let's look at like the heating curve of iron, for example, and let's label the different parts of this diagram. So from zero to 1,538 degrees Celsius, iron exists as a solid. 1,538, Eight would be the melting point. So this is the point when it's going to start melting. From there, it's going to be in the liquid state from 1,538 to 2,861 degrees Celsius. This would just be, you know, a cooler liquid and this would be a hotter liquid at this temperature. Then we get to the boiling point, which is 2,861. That's when it's going to be boiling right here. And then anything above 2,861, it's going to be a gas. It's going to be a vapor. 
This is also where you would define your heat effusion. That's where you have that enough energy in the form of heat, you know, to convert it. And that's where we heat, see our heat of vaporization. Again, we could label this going the opposite direction as a cooling curve, you know, and show it freezing and show, con, you know, it's showing condensing. But this direction shows um, it heating up and going from solid liquid to gas. Okay, the last diagram I want to introduce you to is a phase diagram. And you may not have seen this before because we did not do this in physical science at all if you're in my class. A phase diagram is a graph and it's showing temperature versus pressure. And it allows us to know what phase a substance would be at at various pressures and temperatures. So like if I wanted to be like, okay, we're at 10 atmospheres of pressure and 50 degrees Celsius, you know, what would the temperature be? Well, I mean, this scale is a little whack. It's not really even, but so 10, like maybe atmospheres would be right here. 50 degrees Celsius maybe is like right here. So what, what state is it in? I'll show you a labeled one in just a second. So it's just showing the states of a system change as temperature and pressure change. So let's label the different parts. Right here, this part is always the solid part, kind of the part, you know, on the left side of the diagram, because again, lowest temperatures are always solid. Liquid is gonna be that middle part, it's always gonna be the middle temperature, and then a gas is always gonna be the highest temperatures, but also, as you can see, it can be, ga gases can exist at lower temperatures if the pressure is super, super low. Now, you might be thinking, like, what are these little dots you put on here? The blue dot just represents the normal freezing point. Um, the green dot represents normal boiling point. So notice for water at, you know, one atmosphere of pressure, normal freezing point is zero degrees Celsius, normal boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. The red dot is known as the triple point, which we're gonna define on the next slide. And then the yellow dot is known as the critical point, which we'll define on the next slide. So what's the triple point, what's the critical point? The triple point is just indicates the temperature and pressure conditions necessary for a solid, liquid, and gas of substance to coexist at equilibrium. So for water, that can be at 0 0.006 atmospheres and 0 0.01 degrees Celsius is when solid, liquid, and gas can be existing at equilibrium. The critical point indicates the critical temperature and the critical pressure, which the critical temperature is the temperature above which a substance cannot exist in a liquid state. And the critical pressure is the lowest pressure that marks where substance can exist as a liquid. Okay, so if we go back to here, this is like anything, you know, less than this, it's going to be a liquid. Anything more than this, it has to be a gas. That's just your critical point there. Okay, all right, that's it. We're going to do some um, practice together now. And yeah, hopefully it'll help, you know, make this all make a little bit more sense.